Okay, so today we're going to be continuing to learn about right triangles um, to find sides and angles. Um, we can use something called trigonometry. And so a trigonometric ratio um, is just a ratio of the lengths of two sides of a right triangle. So these, um, these three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, are all, um, you can only use them with uh, right triangles. And so the definition of tangent is that tangent is the side that is opposite over the side that's adjacent. And so um, we can write it as a fraction, so we can go opposite over adjacent. And so when we're talking about a right triangle, um, first of all, it says it's the tangent of A. So we're going to start at angle A. So in our example that we have here, uh, we can put an angle mark in angle A. That's where we're going to start at. And we just want to find the side that is opposite and put that on top and the side that's adjacent and put it on the bottom. So to do this, the um, easiest thing to do first is to always find your hypotenuse first. So remember, our hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So I can label there's my hypotenuse. Um, then the two definitions that we're going to have is um, opposite... The side that is opposite is the side that is across from the angle. And then adjacent is going to be the side that is next to, but not the hypotenuse. And so these definitions will be pretty important. Um, so starting from angle A... Just like we found the hypotenuse was across from the right angle, what we can say is that the side that is across from our angle A is going to be 8. So right there is opposite. And then the remaining side, the side that is next to the angle but not the hypotenuse, would be the 6. So I can label it as ADJ. So over here, um, again, if I'm just saying opposite over adjacent, that would be 8 over 6, which reduces down to 4 thirds. So the tangent of this specific right triangle, the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side, is 8 over 6, or reduce it down to 4 over 3. That's opposite over adjacent. Uh, the second one is sine, um, which is opposite over hypotenuse. And so again, same thing. I can put opposite on the top, and then I can put my hypotenuse on the bottom. And so on my triangle... Again, I'm still starting from angle A. The side that is opposite is the 8. And then the hypotenuse in this case is 10. And so I can reduce that down to 4 over 5. Um, and then the last one is cosine. Cosine is the side that is adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so again, I can write it as adjacent over hypotenuse. And so again, using, so I'm still starting from angle A. So from A, the adjacent side is 6, and the hypotenuse is 10, which reduces down to 3 fifths. Um, so again, that's just the fraction, the ratio of uh, sine, cosine, and tangent for this triangle. Um, I can do the same thing with the next ones, but instead of starting at angle A, I'm starting at angle B. And so if I'm starting at angle B, I would, again, put my angle mark in angle B. 10 is still my hypotenuse, so I can still label that as my hypotenuse. The side that is across from angle B, again, across from is opposite. And next to is adjacent. Um, sometimes it's easier to find adjacent first. I always like thinking of across from because that's the same way we get our hypotenuse. Um, but if you wanted to find the adjacent first, sometimes it's just easier to see uh, when you look at your angle mark. Um, it's always touching the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. So sometimes people like to label adjacent first and know that the other one is opposite, and that's fine. So from B, so here I've got the tangent of B. And so the tangent of B is going to be, again, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so the opposite side from B is 6. 
the adjacent side is 8. 6 over 8, which reduces down to 3 fourths. Uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is 6. The hypotenuse is 10, which reduces down to 3 fifths. And the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to angle B is 8, and the hypotenuse is 10, so it reduces down to 4 fifths. Um, the last one here, then, is tangent of C, sine of C, and cosine of C. Uh, angle C is the right angle that we have here. And so what you need to know is you can't use trig ratios with 90 degrees angles. So these all we can't do. Okay. And so what these trig ratios help us do is on our using our calculators, we can solve for sides. And so the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is you have to have your, you have to have your uh, calculator in degree mode. And so what we can do is... And so if you turn on your calculator and you hit the mode button uh, right next to the second button, and then just go down and make sure that instead of it being in radians, you put it over in degrees and hit enter. So now degrees is lit up. Um, that will make sure that you're getting good answers and not getting incorrect answers the entire time. And so when we're doing this, uh, to write a trig ratio and then to solve our equation, um, like in any equation, you can only find one variable at the, at the same time. So you always have to use two numbers and then one thing you don't know. Uh, with trig, you always have to have an angle. Um, and then have you're going to be finding a side and then uh, have to be given another side. So the first thing that's going to happen is um, you want to circle the two numbers that you have. So I've got the 39 degree angle and I've got the 6 inch angle. Or sorry, 6 inch side. Then, um, let's say that I want to solve for A. I'm going to circle the thing I solve from. So I'm always using three things. Two numbers, one letter, one angle, two sides. From here, now, I'm going to go from my angle. So I can draw my angle mark, and then I can label all my sides. I know that C is my hypotenuse, because it is the side across from my right angle. And again, um, if I draw my angle mark here, my angle mark always touches the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. And then if I think about what side is across from my angle mark, this 6-inch side would be my opposite. So I just like uh, labeling all my sides first, and then now I can move on to my next step, which is to choose my trig ratio. So from here, I look at the side lengths that I've circled. I've circled my side that is opposite and the side that is adjacent. So if I look on the other side of my paper, the trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent, that has opposite and adjacent in it is tangent. So I can go tangent. Next to tangent is always the degree, so 39. Write yourself a little note that this is always your degree or your angle. is equal to, and again, tangent means opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 6 over A. The tangent of 39 is a number. So again, that's just going to be just like a regular number that I can do uh, calculations with. And so to solve my equation here, to get rid of my fraction on this left-hand side over here, or the right-hand side over here, what I can do is I can multiply both sides by whatever's on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply both sides by A. On the right-hand side, my a's cancel out. I have a times the tangent of 39 is equal to 6. And then, to solve to get a by itself again, tangent of 39 is just a regular number. I can divide by the tangent of 39. And so I get a is equal to, and in my calculator, I can type 6 divided by the tangent of 39. And that gives me 7.4. There we go. If I were to use the same picture, to instead of finding A, I want to find C now. I can do the same thing, but now use a different trig ratio. So again, I circle three things. 
Uh, two things I know, one thing I don't know. So two numbers and one letter. One of them has to be an angle, two of them have to be sides. Now I look and I've circled the side that is opposite and the side that is hypotenuse. So the trig ratio that has opposite and hypotenuse in it is sine. So I go sine of always the degree or the angle, which is 39 degrees, is equal to, and the definition of sine on the other side is opposite over hypotenuse. So 6 over C. Again, to solve that equation, then I multiply both sides by whatever's on the bottom. My C's cancel out. I'm left with C times the sine of 39 is equal to 6. Then I can divide both sides by the sine of 39. So I get C is equal to, and your calculator goes 6 divided by the sine of 39, and I get 9.5. Going over to the next example, um, again, same type of thing. Uh, so first thing I want to do is go ahead and circle my two numbers that I have, um, and then choose one of the letters I'm trying to find. I'm always trying to, finding side lengths. So I'm going to circle that uh, lowercase x right there. Let's find x first. So from my 51 degree angle here, that angle mark, I know that 9 is my hypotenuse because that is the side that is across from the right angle. I know y is my adjacent because it's the other side that my angle mark, my angle arc is uh, touching. And I know that across from that angle is going to be the opposite. So I look at the things that I've circled. I've circled the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I know that I'm going to choose sine. So I go sine of 51 is equal to x over 9. Because sine means opposite over hypotenuse. So again, make sure that you're thinking here, not just always multiplying both sides by the letter. This time, I'm just multiplying both sides by 9. So when I do that, uh, that's my answer. So 9 times the sine of 51, I type it into my calculator. And I get 6.9943, which ends up rounding to the tenth would be 7.0 is equal to x. Again, if I were to do the same thing, but instead of finding x, I want to find y. So again, starting from my angle, I've got all my sides labeled still. I've got adjacent and hypotenuse, which means I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of 51 is equal to y over 9. Uh, cosine means adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's why, how I got y over 9. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 9. So 9 times the cosine of 51 gives me 5 point, so it's 6, 6, so I go, round it up to 5.7 is equal to y. The last two examples on the very bottom, then, um, is just uh, so we can find angles instead of having to find sides. Uh, whenever we do this, we hit the second button and then sine, cosine, or tangent. So in this problem, if I wanted to find out what uh, this angle was, angle A was, I'll put an X there. Um, I'm going to still follow the same steps. I'm going to circle the letter and the two numbers that I have. And then I'm going to label my sides. 10 is my hypotenuse. Again, if I'm thinking about my angle mark right here, 5 is my adjacent because it's the other side that touches my angle mark. And then the side that is across is the one that is, uh, or the side that's across is my opposite side. So from here, again, I'm going to go, uh, I've got adjacent and hypotenuse circled. So that's going to be cosine. Remember that your um, angle always goes with the sine, cosine, or tangent, so it's cosine of x is equal to, and then a j, uh, cosine means adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 5 over 10. And so what you'll do here is, on your calculator, you'll hit second cosine, and what will happen is you'll get, on your ca calculator, it'll say cosine negative 1, parentheses, and then in the parentheses, you'll type... 5 divided by 10.
and what everyone's calculator should say is 60 degrees. Um, and so again, you've got a 90 degree angle, right here is gonna be a 60 degree angle, and so knowing that they have to add up to 180, you know that this would have to be 30 degrees, okay? So again, second cosine will get us that cosine to the negative first, that inverse cosine is what it's called, and that'll help you find the angle. And then the last uh, example that we have here, again, same thing. Uh, if I put an X here for angle E, and I circle the two numbers and the letter I'm trying to find, I can draw my angle mark right here. This is my adjacent side. This is my hypotenuse. And then there's my side that is opposite. And so again, I've circled the sides that are 6 and 4. That's adjacent and hypotenuse. Remember, that's how I'm finding my trig ratio. And so uh, it's going to be tangent. So I go tangent of x is equal to 6 over 4. So I go second tangent, which is that inverse tangent. And in the parentheses, I go 6 divided by 4. And when I do that, I end up with 56.3. Um, if instead of finding angle E, I wanted to find angle F, so I put a Y there. Um, again, I'm still using the 4 and the 6. From angle F now, the 6 is going to be my adjacent, and the 4 is going to be my opposite. And so when I do this, uh, again, it's still going to be tangent because I have opposite and adjacent sides. So tangent of y is equal to, this is now going to be 4 over 6. So I go inverse tangent of 4 divided by 6. There we go, and I get 33.7 degrees. Just like that.